All right, essential question for this video is this. How do you find the area of a trapezoid? So here's the deal. All I've drawn is a very simple trapezoid for you right here, and I've labeled it. What you remember from trapezoids that we've seen a couple times throughout the year is these two sides right here are the parallel sides. Doesn't have to be an isosceles trapezoid, although I drew it that way, so it doesn't matter. You have a base and you have a second base. So I've labeled this B1 as the length of base one, if you will, and B2 is the length of base number two. And this right here we've seen many times, that's the height drawn from the top down there, making a right angle. We have an, uh, the height of that trapezoid. So here's all I've done. I've taken this trapezoid and I've cloned it and put it right down here. So you can see B1 is still the same thing, B2 is still the same thing, and the heights are still the same thing. Now, I've also cloned it again. And I've taken this trapezoid, I've cloned it, and all I've done is I've flipped it. I've taken it like this, and I've flipped it, and put it right there, and attached it to the right side of this particular trapezoid. Bear with me, we're getting somewhere, I promise. So that's the length of base one, so since I've cloned it and flipped it, that means base number one also is down here, that length, whatever it is. Base number two, since I've cloned and flipped it, that means it's up here where my thumb is. Thumb is up here, so that means it's over here. So right there, guy. So the height is still the same, so why did I do this? Because all I've done is taken a trapezoid, trying to formulate, get you guys to think about formulating the formula for the area of a trapezoid. So we have this red thing now that I've just created that is actually two exact size trapezoids. It is just a parallelogram. Whoa. We know how to find the area of a parallelogram. The formula tells us area of a parallelogram is base times height. So here's all I've done. If you look at how this works, the whole entire base of this trapezoid, the whole thing, is actually B1 plus B2. That's the whole entire base length of the red trapezoid. The height is the blue. It's the same no matter what, no matter where it is. So I've taken B1 plus B2 and I substitute that right there in for the base, and that's the height. So that's exactly how you'd find the area, if you will, of this particular parallelogram. Why did I show you that? Because as we solve a triangle, all I've done, I've taken this particular line right there, and it really kind of divides the overall red parallelogram exactly in half. Hmm. So that means if I take this formula and divide it exactly in half, that's going to give me everything that you see in this particular parallelogram except the right side of it. So I can erase all this, all this, all this, all this, all of it is actually gone. So what I'm left with then to find the area of this trapezoid is really, according to this, sum of the two bases, take that times the height, and divide that by two. And in fact, oddly enough, that is the exact formula for the area of a trapezoid. Hmm. So put this down in your notes, or your foldable, I guess you should say. Just slide this over here. So there you go. It is theorem 102, area of a trapezoid. This is the picture as we just saw, length of base one, length of base two, H is the height. Got that written right here. H is the height. B1 is the length of one of the bases. B2 is the length of another base. Whatever it happens to be. It doesn't matter. So then the actual formula itself is this. The area of a trapezoid is one half times the height times the sum of the two bases. That's exactly what we just saw. You could also write it this way. It is the height times the sum of the two bases. All that divided by two. It is the same exact thing. So I did a quick example over here for you so you can see it. If we knew that we'll say H is four, and we knew that B1 up here was seven, and we knew that B2 happened to be 13. Phenomenal. All you have to do, a very simple straightforward question, but just plug in the numbers. H is the height, so I put it in here for H, bam. I put the seven and the 13 in for the two bases, and I plug it in so I get four for H, seven for B1, 13 for B2, and I simplify it out. Now I did it two different ways so you can see this. When you do get to this point, you can come over here and say, okay, wait, I gotta add this stuff in the parentheses, so that gives me 20. So I get one half times four times 20. Well, order of operations say you work from left to right, so you can actually do one half times four, which gives you the two. And then you take that times the 20, which gives you your overall answer of 40 units squared. Phenomenal. The other way that you can do it is this. You can actually add the seven and 13 again, get the 20. And then you can actually do this, because it's commutative property multiplication. It doesn't matter the order in which you do it, honestly. So, it's just a property we know. You can take 20 times four and get that to be 80 first. You could do that. And then take half of that to give you your 40. It doesn't matter. Either way, it's totally cool. 
doesn't matter to me how you do it at all. Just that's the two ways I want to show you. So there's that. Um, let's apply it to an example now and see how this actually might work in an example. Now, this is kind of a little bit involved, but I love this question. So you got a trapezoid. Here's the given information. It is an isosceles trapezoid, M-A-S-H. So M-A-S-H is an isosceles trapezoid. That's important. A-S is 28. That's the distance right there. MH is 12, that's the distance right there. And we're also given the overall area of the trapezoid. So let me take a step back from what we talked about at the beginning of the chapter. That means you'd be able to fit 300 little units squared, whatever it is, inches squared, centimeters squared, miles squared, into that particular trapezoid right there. The question though, tricky question, is asking you to find the length of ma. Ma, 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 ma. Find the length of MA. So that's this right there. Well, here's how it's done. I have a trapezoid. I know the area. So right away, bam, I think of the area of a trapezoid formula. I'll write it down. Perfect. One half h height times the sum of the two bases. Well, what do I know? Whatever I do know, let's plug it in to those spots in the formula that I have. One half, done. Height, oh, I don't know the height. I don't know the height. That would be this thing right here. That guy right there. That's the height of which I actually don't know. Well, maybe I can find it. That might actually help me. So let's see. Um, I have the two bases. Good. I have the base 1, which is 28. I have base 2, which is 12. Phenomenal. And I plugged in the area because I knew the area was 300. So there you go. So when I saw this out, you see I actually did these. Added them together first. Got 40. Community the property says I can actually switch, in the, switch the H and the 40. So I can really do 1 half times 40. That's where the 20 came from. And then I divide both sides. Simple algebra, which means I get H, the height, to be 15. That is phenomenal. That actually helps me tremendously. So I know that this is 15. So if that's 15, how does that help me? Well, let me take kind of a little step back here so you can see the, the, the uh, trapezoid behind me. I've done a little bit more detail. So now I have this 15, the height. We found that. We know the base up here is 28, and the base down here is 12. Well, we've seen this a ton of times throughout many homework examples prior to this chapter. If we draw another altitude, right there. Since this trapezoid is isosceles, we've seen it many times. We can, through many steps, prove that those two triangles are congruent. Why is that helpful? That means this piece has to be congruent to this piece. And as we've seen many times, since these guys from this from M to H is 12, that means from this point to this point is also 12. And remember, I was given the whole thing from A to S was 28. So if I take away 28, wait, 12 from 28, you actually get 16. Who cares? Well, that means I have 16 divided by 2 because these two parts are equal. So I have to divide 16 total units into two equal parts. What is that? Two equal parts. <laughs> so that means this is 8 and this is 8. Now, you might be sitting there thinking, how is this helpful? Remember what we're trying to find. We're trying to find ma. Ma, 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 ma. So there's ma. There's ma. But wait a minute. If I look at this triangle, it's a right triangle of which if I pulled it out, hmm, this side is 8, this side is 15, bingo, Pythagorean triple. 8, 15, 17 is the Pythagorean triple, and 17 would be your answer. And that's how you do it. Let's keep moving. So that's a trapezoid. There's another little definition in this, in this section that you need to know that kind of leads into another formula for the area of a trapezoid. And here's what it is. Definition needs to go in your foldable. A median, it's a definition of what a median is. Now, we've heard the word median before in many different sections and or questions. It's not what you think though. A median of a trapezoid, so there's the key thing. It's not a triangle, we talked about that, but this is the median of a trapezoid. It is the segment joining the midpoints of the non-parallel sides. So notice this doesn't say isosceles trapezoid. It doesn't matter. It's just a trapezoid. Can be isosceles. In this case, it looks like isosceles, but we don't know it. However, there's a picture. That is the median. It's the segment that joins the midpoints of the non-parallel sides. Now, just to recap, I'll get out of the way so you can see it. We talked about a median of a triangle. Remember, that is when a segment comes from a vertex and goes to the midpoint of the opposite side of a triangle, like such. That's a median of a triangle. A median of a trapezoid goes from midpoint to midpoint. Hmm. A median of a triangle goes from vertex to midpoint. Median of a trapezoid, hmm. midpoint to midpoint. 
wait, midpoint to midpoint seems similar to something else. It does. It's called a midline. <laughs> we talked about the midline of a triangle that went from midpoint to midpoint of a triangle. So just to kind of pull it all together, meaning of a trapezoid, it is from midpoint to midpoint, it's that segment. Now, theorem 103 talks about finding the length of a median. Well, if I know, we'll say for example, I don't know, let's say this is 10, I'll make this up. And let's say that this down here is, I don't know, 2. It's not drawn to scale, whatever. So if it asks you to find the length of the median, this is the theorem that you use, then M stands for the length of the median, is 1 half length of base 1 plus length of base 2. So it's the sum of the two bases, and you take half of it. Well, that's pretty simple. So 1 half times 10 plus 2 would give me 1 half times 12, which give me 6. So the distance, or the length of that particular median, would be 6. So there you go. So we got median, we got area of trapezoid. And the last thing is another theorem, which actually, let's take a little bit of a closer look at this. Let's see how this looks. A closer look. Theorem 102, we just talked about, that's the area of a trapezoid, 1 half times the height times the sum of the two bases. Theorem, theorem 103, just threw the marker, it's weird. Theorem 103 is the length of a median, which is 1 half base 1 plus base 2. So the sum of the two bases times half. And over here, theorem 102 is the sum of the two bases times half, but then times h. Now wait a minute, this is getting pretty cool. If I take the sum and the h and use the commutative property of multiplication and just flip-flop them, order doesn't matter, this is what I get. Now why am I showing you that? Because if you look, this piece right here that's highlighted in green is exactly the same piece as what this is. So that means what I can do is I can take this, which is the length of the median, and substitute that in right there for that whole expression one half sum of the two bases. And it leads me to another way that you can slickly find the uh, area of a trapezoid by taking the length of the median times the height. That's pretty cool. Now sometimes you don't need it for sure, but it is nice, a nice little shortcut if you're kind of stuck and, and or you really know it. So wanted to make sure you knew that. And last thing, let's do a pretty cool example. I'll move this over again. 